All right, so today we are going to learn how to create this big head sort of effect. Uh, so what I mean by that is we have the user's head, uh, it's slightly enlarged, and we have this um, 3D smaller body. Uh, it's a pretty fun effect that shows up here and there. Um, it's easy to make, but it's not necessarily straightforward. So let's get into how this effect is created. Okay, so I'm starting here with just a blank project, and all I've done so far is I've just imported my uh, 3D model for the body. Uh, you can create this yourself, you can download one. Um, this isn't a 3D modeling tutorial, so I won't go into how I made it, uh, but you do need to make sure you have some sort of body to add to the head. So that's the first thing you need. And then the second thing you need are the face reference assets. So if you search for Spark AR face reference assets, you'll come to this page. And what these are, are a collection of different textures and meshes that are useful for creating effects in Spark AR. So I recommend you download them regardless. Uh, they come in quite handy. Uh, so it has the face mesh. Uh, we don't need that. What we do want is this head occluder. Now you can use your own head model if you want. Um, just to keep things easy, I'm going to use the one that Spark creates uh, and provides, I guess. And then they also have some different uh, textures if you're creating like makeup. Uh, so lots of useful stuff in here. So just click this pink button to download it. You go ahead and save the file and unzip it. Once you've done that, um, we want to import the head occluder mesh into Spark AR. So once you unzip everything, you can just uh, click into here, go into mesh, find head occluder. It doesn't really matter which of the formats you use, uh, but just uh, copy into your project. All right, so we have everything we need to get started. So let's start with our um, creating the head first. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to add a face mesh. Now the face mesh itself is not sufficient to get the full effect because it's just the face, it's not the rest of the head. Um, but when the user like opens their mouth, you can see their chin goes down. So we want the face mesh to make sure it doesn't get cut off um, because what we're going to do is project the camera texture onto the mesh. So we want to make sure we're tracking the face and head as best we can. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and add our head occluder. They aren't going to be actually hiding anything. We just want to make sure this is in here. All right, so you can see here we have that head occluder. It more or less matches the size of the face mesh, but there's lots of the head kind of around the edges. So I'm going to scale this up just a little bit. Uh, so let's pause this so it's a little easier. And I want to make it just a tad wider just a little taller. Let's move it up. We aren't going down too far. Now this doesn't need to be exact. Um, just try to kind of match the head, but you don't want to go too far past, otherwise you're going to pick up some of the background. Uh, so let's start with this and we'll see how it goes. All right, so next we need a material for the face mesh and the head, and we're going to use the same material for both. So we already have this Lambert one material here. I'm just going to rename this. Um, actually, it won't let me do that. So let's just create a new material. I'm going to call this head and I'm going to apply it to both the face mesh and the head occluder. Let's find that. Switch out the material. All right, so here we have it. Uh, this is not looking pretty good so far but this will be really easy to fix. Uh, so let's change this to flat. We don't want any lighting because we're gonna grab what the camera sees. Then for the texture, we're gonna click this little arrow uh, to create a patch. Now, if the patch editor does not open up automatically, you can just come up to view and show hide patch editor. All right, so now we can set the texture of our material and we want to grab it from the camera. So let's select the camera. We'll do the texture extraction. Then we'll find that over here and we'll drag it in. Now, if we were to connect these, we're gonna get this really weird looking thing because it's trying to set the entire camera texture onto our mesh. But we don't, want the, we don't want the entire camera texture, we just want the part where the head is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Add Asset, search AR Library, and we want to search for the Texture Projection Patch Asset. Let's click on that. We'll import free, close that out, and 
Let's drag it into our patch editor. And we're going to take our camera texture. We're going to project it onto the head. All right, so in our preview, it looks like we have absolutely nothing going on. And here in our viewport, uh, you have something kind of weird going on. So what is exactly going on? Uh, so all we're doing is we're taking the camera texture and we're just kind of like plastering it against our face mesh and head mesh um, to texture them. So the viewport is going to just look weird, but what we care about is here in the preview. And so you can see that the texture of our face mesh and head mesh exactly match what we see here in the camera. And this is exactly what we want. Now, a problem with this is if we start to move our face mesh, we aren't going to keep the face with it because it's projecting that. So this technique only works if we're actually tracking everything to the head. Uh, just something to keep in mind. So now that we have our head, let's go ahead and add in our background so we can actually kind of see the effect. So I'm going to add a rectangle and let's create a new material for it. This material, we'll call it background. Now you can use whatever kind of background you want. I'm just going to use a flat color. Use like a sky blue. And on the rectangle, I want to fill the screen. I'll give it my background material. Now you can see it's kind of cutting into our face. So on my material, I'm going to turn off use depth test, turn off right to depth. And then I'm going to drag this up above face tracker. And you can see that we now have our isolated head without the rest of the body. Now you might see uh, occasionally some of this fringing of the background around the head. Um, that's just kind of baggage that comes along with this technique because everyone's head is a little differently shaped, hairstyles are different, etc. So if you don't like how it's looking, you can always adjust the size of this head occluder mesh uh, to better match the user's head. So you don't want to go too big, you don't want to go too small. Um, just know that there's always going to be um, a little bit of this fringing or a little bit of the head cut off. The further away from the camera you are, the better it looks, the less fringing there are, and the less your head is turned. So the more straight on you are on the camera, the better it'll look as well. Now, so those are just some of the trade-offs of this technique. So now that we have that there, let's go ahead and bring in our 3D model. So I'm just going to drag that mouse is off in Spark AR. That just sometimes happens. Now, so I'm just going to drag the model into the face tracker. Now let's pause this so we can size this a little better. Let's scale it down so we have kind of that big head effect. Zoom in and let's position this. There we go. And let's bring up our lighting so we can see it better. Let's hit play. And now we have our body attached to the head um, without the rest of the person. And that is it for the big head effect. Uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So you just got to know about that texture projection. Really, all you do is you have the face mesh, the head occluder, or some sort of head mesh. Um, give them both the same material and project the camera texture onto that mesh. Um, and then you're good to add everything else and your effect is done.